Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this. I guess it would be kind of a feather inspired fondant technique. Um, I'm also using some velvet texture spray, which I've been wanting to do for a while. I've had it and I finally used it. And then how to also carve on buttercream. So let's get started. First, we're going to do our first coat of buttercream on our cakes. They're already pre-filled and crumb coated with a dark chocolate ganache. You can use whatever ganache you like, or you don't even have to use ganache. You can crumb coat with buttercream just as easily. I just like the ganache because I feel like it's a little bit more firm, but I don't always use it. If you've watched my other videos, or you know, you'll see that I don't always use the ganache. Just sometimes you want to change things up. So I put on a generous amount of buttercream and then I am using my scraper to scrape it down and smooth it out and fill out any holes that you might have. Now this first coat doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can go ahead and pop it in the freezer for 10 minutes or the refrigerator for 20 minutes to set up if you feel like you can do um, a cleaner coat the second time. Now that if you do, that'll be your third coat, but that's okay. Take your time. Sometimes we need to just um, set it aside and come back to it. Now I put that one in the freezer and I'm getting my bottom tier out. This was a three tier or a three layered six inch on top and then a four layer eight inch, no, seven inch on the bottom, I believe. And again, I filled it and crumb coated it with the, the dark chocolate ganache. When I do dark chocolate ganache, I like to use a um, two to one ratio. Two parts of the cream. No, let me get that right. One part cream to two parts chocolate. Sorry, I had to think that through for a second. It's only two ingredients and I had to think about it. It's like I have got to count on my fingers kind of moment. <laughs> and then go ahead and pull that top rim into the middle. And sometimes I have to go back because, you know, a little bit of a perfectionist. And I know there's going to be that texture spray on it, but... Um, personally, I like to have my base coat as perfect as I can get it because if you have lumps, bumps, mistakes, um, even if you're doing fondant on top of it or a texture spray on top of it, you might be able to see it. So I just like to go ahead and take the time to get them as smooth as I can. And I clean off the board and I set that in the refrigerator to chill also. In the meantime, we're going to make these feathers. I don't know what else to call them. If you guys have a better name for what this abstract look is, remind you of let me know to me they kind of look like feathers um but very large feathers maybe a grouping of feathers I don't know so I'm just rolling out my fondant as thin as I can get it without getting it too thin um maybe about an eighth of an inch thick and I'm just using my circle cutters I decided what size I wanted to use you can use whatever size you want to and I'm just cutting out a bunch of circles I didn't know how many I would need because I didn't actually have a final design in mind. I had an idea. So I just always like to err on the side of caution and have more than you need. Now, since I had already cut them all out and there is a little bit of Tylos, which helps your fondant firm up a little faster and a little firmer, I went ahead and covered them with some saran wrap to try to keep the air from drying them out too, drying them out too much. And then I'm simply just folding them in half. That's it. Now don't fold too many of them in half at a time because you will find that they dry out before you get to them. And even if that does happen, it did happen to me a couple of times. Um, if when you're assembling your, um, your decoration, if they crack, just add a little bit of water at the fold where you, where you fold it and that will glue them back together again. Not a huge deal. Because you can see, I just went ahead and I folded them all and then covered them back up again. Ah, there you can see it. I had a crack and I just add a little water to it and re-glued it. I'm just simply lining them up one on top of the other. Making sure that they are good and stuck together. But you want the top edge to be free. So don't glue it all the way to the top of your circles or half circles, I guess I should say, because otherwise it's just going to be, you know, no movement to them. And I did them a varying, varying different ways. These I laid side by side instead of nestled inside of each other, made two rows of them and then stuck them all together. So that's where I get the feather look from, how that looks. 
and I did some single ones, and I just um, wanted to get an idea of how I wanted it to look before I placed it on the cake. My ideal situation here would be that I'd be able to let it sit up and f- sit out and firm up a little bit, and I'd be able to move the entire piece onto the cake all at once. Well, of course, that didn't happen, but that's okay. I had an idea of how I wanted the final look to look like, or the final design to look like. I just wanted them to kind of flare out a little bit. It almost looks a little bit like wheat, doesn't it? Maybe it's the color, because I just went with white, because the uh, velvet texture spray I got was white. I don't know. Um, Anyway, just set those aside for a while, and I made a a, a cluster (laughs) of them for the top also. I just didn't show you that. It's basically the same idea. And then I'm just cutting my straws to the height of the cake, putting a little bit of buttercream on top to glue the top tier on top. And yeah, I can touch these because they are firm from being in the freezer. And here's the velvet spray. I have done some research. Um, Maybe I should say that for a minute here. Um, I'm using this box just to try to control some of the overspray. This stuff is cocoa butter, mainly cocoa butter. So it's, uh, you know, butter is um, slimy. (laughs) You know, it's hard to clean up. So I'm trying to control some of the overspray, but it did get on my table and I just went ahead and cleaned it off. But it was worth it, I think. And I find that if you make short passes at it, um, it works a little bit better, but it's really super easy to use. But like I was going to say, I, um, I've been wanting to use this for a while and I started shopping a while ago and I held off because honestly, it's kind of expensive. See, there you can see the texture. It's hard to see it in the lighting in the studio when I'm doing white on white. But there I wanted to show you what it looked like. And I'm just attaching these with some buttercream and using some toothpicks to hold them in place while they set up in the fridge. Um, But yeah, so back to the texture spray. It's a little expensive, but that one can. I will be doing more because there's I've got plenty left over. Next thing I want to try to do is um, airbrush it. See if I can add color to the white because you only have a few colors to pick from. Um, and I don't always want to do a black or red or, you know, a green or an orange. Sometimes I want to add different colors. So I'm going to try to airbrush on top of it soon here. That's, that's in my plan. And here I'm just using some clay sculpting tools and adding some lines, some veins. You don't have to do this. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had left it as it is, but this is another technique I wanted to try. And sometimes I combine, (laughs) combine too much on a cake. I have to admit to myself that sometimes I do combine too many techniques. I get excited and I want to put it all together. So anyway, use it at your own, um, you know, whatever you want to do. If you don't want to add these, you don't have to. And you don't have to do, you don't even have to add the metallic. That's just um, gold luster dust and Everclear mixed together is all I used. Um, You could do a different metallic if you want to. But I'm just trying to aim for in the um, carved out sections, which was a little difficult, I found. I don't know if it's because of the texture on the outside edge of where I carved it out or if it was my brush, but um, I wanted them to be a little on the thinner side, a little bit more um, minimalistic, but they ended up being a little thicker. I think maybe that's what distracted me a little bit from this design was it was more gold than I intended. I wanted it to be more subtle, but that's okay. I think it still looked pretty. And we're just going to paint in all of them. And you can see all those toothpicks holding it all together. That's okay. When you use toothpicks, just try to strategically place them in a way that when you pull them out, which just FYI, when you pull them out, when it's set up, twist them, then pull them out. Otherwise, you might end up pulling off more than just your toothpick. Um, Yeah, so that's how I got those to stick. And I, I didn't pull them out until the next day. You might only need to give it a couple of hours. And you will notice, I don't know if you will notice, but I did the next day go back and I added more petals because it was a little bit not as filled in as I had in my head. So I did go back and I added some more, but I don't show you that because it's the same way that I did the first time. See, there you can see there's more. So there's our final look, guys. I hope you liked it. And guys, if you wouldn't mind, take the time to go ahead and subscribe if you have not subscribed, but you are watching my videos, I have a new goal of getting to 200K and I would really appreciate it. So we'll catch you on the next video.